Hello Fiber Fam, I'm Jillian Eve and today we're going to find out what is the deal with overspun yarn. Okay, so to do this experiment, we're going to uh, start by spinning up some of this wool top. It is from Dashing Mouse Fibers. I will put a link to this wool down below. It's Coradale. Lovely colors. I've divided it into four sections. This colorway is called Popsicle, and the colors are bright and will look great up close uh, as we examine the twist in our overspun yarn to see what's going on when we set the yarn. I definitely want to test the uh, trick that people seem to think makes a balanced yarn out of an overspun yarn, which is hanging a weight on the yarn as it's drying and uh, see what happens when it is re-wet. Does it actually fix an overspun yarn and take the energy out or does it just hide it? So I'm going to spin each of these in uh, two parts. They will each be a ply for a two ply yarn. So I'm separating each of these sections out. And once the fiber is all prepared, I'm going to start spinning. We will get this spun up and continue with our, oh, I'm twisted. I'm twisted. We will continue, there we go, with the experiment. as if I was going to create a balanced yarn, and I think that's what I accomplished. I took into account the fiber staple and how much twist it would take to hold it securely into a nice fluffy yarn. It's about six wraps of yarn per inch with approximately a 60 degree angle to the twist. For the next three ounces, I spun with about twice the treadle that I did for the balanced yarn. I definitely got some overspun plied yarn. It was jumping out of my hands. It was kinking up on the wheel before it was drawing into the bobbin. It had a lot of energy. It wanted to go places. It's energized. The overspun yarn is much tighter than the balanced yarn. The singles are uh, tighter because the twist is holding the fibers together more compactly with less air and fluff in the singles. And then the act of overspinning the plies also gave it more energy and even more compactly um, twisted those two singles together. So the final ounce of the overspun yarn ended up being about nine wraps per inch with a twist angle of approximately 50 degrees. Next, I wet finished all of the yarn. I got them soaking in a pan of warm water. I gently took out the excess water, squashed them with a towel so it would absorb some of that extra, and then I hung them like I usually do to finish my yarn. However, because this is an experiment, we want to see what happens with our overspun twisted yarn. Here, here is how I hung the yarn. This is the balanced yarn. As you can see, it's hanging very straight. It's not kinking up on itself. It has a lovely fluffy texture to it and it's a very nice, warm looking, bulky yarn. These other three yarns here, I'll pull that one out of the way so we can see better. These three here, here, and here were my overspun yarns. Now, 
I left this one to hang on its own weight and as you can see, unlike the balanced yarn, this one is twisting up on itself in its own skein. The other two I hung with weights. I hung them with weights because that's usually the go-to trick or hack if you will um, to balance an overspun yarn. Is that energy gone? Has it been fixed and balanced? Or is the energy just hidden? And will it pop up again once this yarn goes into a project? Woven, knit, crocheted, what, um, whatever project you have intended for this yarn. So I'm going to take these weights off now. We're gonna see if it kinks back up. And we can compare it to the overspun yarn that did not have a weight and we can compare it to the um, balanced yarn that also did not have a weight to see what hanging the weight on the yarn really does to an overspun skein. Hmm. All right, there we have it. The weight is off of this one here. And it definitely is not looking very much like the balanced yarn at all. It does look much more like the overspun but unweighted yarn. However, it's a little longer. I believe that the weight simply pulled the yarn to its stretchiest and set it in that position. I still see this twist on this, on this skein here that is showing me that this yarn still has some energy in it. It is still wanting to balance itself and it is still twisting to attempt to accommodate that. Now, we're going to take this overspun yarn We are going to get it wet and see what happens. Is it going to curl up again? Or is it going to remain straightened and held and hold in a straightened position from having the weight on it? Let's find out. Okay, so I have some warm water ready and we're going to see what happens when we re-wet one of the overspun yarns. Right here I have you can see this is the balanced yarn. It wasn't hung with any weight it's just what the fiber did when it was balanced for the staple length and applied together so that it would not twist on itself. The next one as you can see, it's twisting in its skein, unlike the balanced one. This one was hung just on its own weight. It wasn't weighted down or stretched or anything like that, and it does want to, it really wants to curl up on itself. Um, so you can see, compare the difference up close here. You can see the overspun one is uh, much tighter, even though it drafted the same because it had more twist to it it compacted on itself um, more tightly and the balanced yarn didn't do that so it's fluffier. And then the final sample we have here is the overspun but hung with a weight and it's still t a little energized but it doesn't feel um, like it has as much energy as the one that was just hung on its own. It, um, it's a little straighter. It's a little um, less unruly, I should say. So now I am going to take this one right here and this one was spun and hung with a weight. It was overspun it was hung with a weight on it. Okay, they would say don't use overspun yarn as a material for your warp because of the tension the warp is under. These kinked up spots um, are actually weak spots in the yarn where they could snap. 
and because warp is put under tension that way um, you risk breaking your warps which is a frustrating process to deal with if you're in the middle of a project but you know these kinks and and twists and swirls do give it a lot of character so I really think depending on your project you know you could really take advantage of that um, characteristic of this overspun yarn I don't think that having overspun yarn is inherently bad I do think it's still lovely yarn but what um, would need to happen if I were to use this in a project is that I would need to know that it's overspun and here is the reason why so um, let's go ahead and take this overspun this overspun sample right here okay so it's a little twisty it does resemble the one that was hung under its own weight um, let's get it wet Now, let's take a look at what is going on here. Whoa! Okay, so I just straightened it out like this. <laughs> look at all the kinks and ropes and twists and curls. Oh my goodness, it is very overspun and watch, watch that. <laughs> oh, so I just held it straight and let it go and it's trying to ply on itself basically <laughs> it's making rope here so it has a lot of energy and this is exactly what I was referring to this is the problem that comes when you have a yarn that is overspun and you try to mask that by hanging it with a weight hanging it with the weight is going to hide the energy it will not balance the yarn the yarn still has the energy and as soon as that yarn gets wet the energy comes back so if I were to do a project with this overspun yarn not realizing that it's overspun and then I go to wet finish and block my project I'm gonna have a surprise because my fabric is going to get this twist in it as soon as it gets wet and it's going to wrinkle and crunch and curl and warp and and um, uh, distort itself and that might be an unwelcome surprise so I think that the lesson here is to know your yarn and know what you're working with there can be some great projects done with yarn that is overspun and I'm going to write up a couple patterns for those they will be on the website jillianeve.com and you can go check them out there the overspun yarn can be beautiful but you have to know that that's what you're working with you don't want surprises at the end of your project it's sort of like if you have curly hair and you take a flat iron to your curly hair it's gonna straighten it out it's gonna hide the curls but as soon as that curly hair gets wet again guess what it curls right back up and I think that's the same trick we've done here by hanging a weight on the yarn it basically gives it uh, the same effect as a flat iron it hides what's actually there it can give it a look that you want but it's not a permanent solution so there we have it overspun yarn Um, hung with a weight, overspun yarn hung on its own. This is the wet one that we've re-wet and now we can definitely see how girly it is. It is all curling up on itself. Be a beautiful cable yarn actually. And then we have the balanced yarn that was just hung on its own. Uh, check out JillianEve.com. There will be some fun projects there to use. I'll be knitting these into those projects. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you want to see notifications, you can hit that little bell uh, down at the bottom. And it will let you know when there's new content up. I will be posting a new video every week. Put a little twist in your life. And I will see you next time. Fiber in my lipstick.